All right, so wrapping up this, uh, ra- wrapping things up, we have Brenda Ramirez from the graph. So I'm assuming we're going to talk about subgraphs and things. What do we think? Is that a good guess? That's the plan. Can everyone hear me okay? We can hear you perfect. Perfect. Let's do it's it. All yours. Yeah. So, like you said, I'm uh, Brandon Ramirez. I'm one of the co-founders of the Graph, and I'm a uh, research lead at Edge and Node. Uh, and today, I want to talk about delegating in the Graph, and specifically how to get to know the indexers that are participating in the network, uh, and you know how to choose between them. But before we get into that, let's do a quick recap of what the Graph is, just in case anyone on the call is new to the Graph. The Graph is a indexing and query layer that sits on top of blockchain and storage networks like IPFS, and it exposes data to decentralized applications in a way that it can be queried really efficiently. Uh, So the graph is now powering most of the prominent uh, decentralized applications in Ethereum, Uh, a bunch of names that you know and love and apps that I'm sure you use all the time if you're in the DeFi space. Uh, Most of those apps today are running on what we call the hosted service. So that's kind of been this, uh, you know, centralized infrastructure that we've run hosting like the open source graph node for the last year and change. Um, And this is, so these are some of this growth stats on the hosted service. Uh, But the next stage of the network, you know, a milestone actually that we just hit this past December is actually launching the decentralized network. So that's always kind of been this vision from the get-go of, you know, progressive decentralization. So we started back in, you know, July 2018 by open sourcing the graph node. You know, we did the hosted service. We, this past summer, uh, during the peak of COVID, we did the uh, the mission control test net. Uh, and then just this past December, we launched the decentralized network. Uh, so since the network's launched, uh, the main activity in the network has been around staking and delegation. So we've already seen almost 2 billion of uh, the graphs, uh, 10 billion uh, token supply already staked. Now those 10 billion aren't liquid right now. So these two, those 2 billion are actually quite a, a large share of what's, uh, what's circulating. Uh, and we've seen about 13 million uh, GRT uh, paid out in indexing rewards. And we've seen over 30K GRT paid out in query fees. And those query fees at this point in the network are more around uh, giving indexers something that they can keep testing and refining their uh, their indexer software with. So uh, it's probably out of the scope of this talk, but one of our big focuses for the, you know, the next few months is migrating over all the apps um, from you know, the hosted service to uh, you know, the decentralized network. And there's a, a lot of work that's kind of going into that right now to make that you know, stable and a good experience for, uh, for those developers. Um, but in the meantime, the main activity is you know, this interaction in the marketplace between indexers and delegators. And the primary activity of you know, indexers is uh, sort of uh, participating in the mechanics of you know, submitting proofs of indexing and collecting indexing rewards for the subgraph that's uh, deployed to the network at the moment. So in this talk, I want to focus on learning a little bit about what those indexing and delegation economics are. Uh, see how some of that stuff is playing out in the network over the last uh, you know, few months or month, month and change. Uh, define what makes a good indexer and kind of give you some resources for uh, getting started. So let's jump in. So I'm not going to cover the whole protocol, but just a quick recap is, you know, the core of the graph is kind of this query marketplace where consumers, you know, which would be users of decentralized apps, uh, pay indexers uh, query fees in exchange for querying specific subgraphs. And so subgraphs are these, you know, data sets. There might be one, uh, there's, you know, one's for Uniswap, there's one for Synthetics, one's for Moloch. Um, so you actually have like many small query markets, you know, where indexers are competing to serve queries on a specific data set. One of the ways that indexers choose which subgraphs to index in the first place is uh, in response to what we call the curation market. So we have this role of a curator. Curators signal graph tokens on specific subgraphs that they think would be valuable for the network uh, to index. 
Uh, in exchange for making good predictions, curators earn a, a share of the query fees generated by those um, generated by those subgraphs. We call them curator royalties. Um, and those that signal that they provide uh, on the subgraph actually plays into the incentives that uh, affect the the indexers. Now, so that's the only reason I bring it up in the context of of this talk. I'm going to leave this on the screen for a second. I'm not going to walk through all of it, but it's just a good it's a good screen to have to, to go back and pause on on YouTube. But uh, some things I will mention are that delegators and indexers stake into the protocol as a whole. That's a pretty important concept. And then once a delegator stake uh, delegate stake to an indexer, it's up to the indexer to actually allocate that stake towards individual subgraphs. And those allocations are where rewards are calculated. So the query fees and the indexing rewards that we just mentioned. So the indexing rewards are paid out in proportion to the signal on each subgraph. Uh, so you, we don't need to go into all the symbols here, but uh, basically, you know, if you have, uh, if you're indexing on a subgraph, that subgraph signal proportional to the rest of the subgraphs in the network is going to determine what share of indexing rewards the indexers on that subgraph uh, can claim. Now, once you allocate the indexing rewards to that subgraph, it's distributed according to proportional stake uh, that's allocated by each indexer on that subgraph. So that's kind of this um, term that you see on the left here is the indexer stake relative to other indexers on a subgraph. The term in the middle is uh, the subgraph's share of signal relative to total signal that's in the network. And then those things are parameterized by the issuance rate. So right now, for example, the graph network has the issuance rate of 3% uh, annual uh, tokens minted. The other major incentive for indexers are uh, the query fee rebates. So uh, the rebate mechanism in, or in order to uh, support both civil resistance and economic security uh, requires that indexers, or I shouldn't say requires, it incentivizes indexers to supply stake in rough proportion to the amount of work that they're doing in the network. Um, and we borrow this uh, Cobb-Douglas function that's widely known in um, in economics and was uh, first introduced, as far as I'm aware, into like kind of the blockchain space for the zero X uh, protocol rebates. Um, but the effect that it has is that indexers are they earn a greater share of their query fees back as rebates when they successfully allocate stake in proportion to their uh, their share of fees. So that's kind of the that's the decision problem that indexers have to solve here. Now, all of this I'm kind of showing these are, these are like uh, snapshots of you know a function, but obviously these things are playing out over time. So the way that the protocol is set up is that we break uh, the protocol rewards down into uh, epochs. So epochs are ba basically discrete units of protocol time. Uh, right now, it, they're parameterized such that one epoch is about 24 hours, and then uh, allocations that end on the same epoch are grouped for the purpose of these rewards calculations. So like all allocations that end on, uh, you know, like epoch three, they're gonna be in the same um, pool of rebates and the same pool of indexing rewards as far as the calculations are concerned. Allocations uh, are basically like the duration in which like an indexer allocates stake towards a specific subgraph. And that can last up to 28 days. Um, we haven't seen most allocations go as long as 28 days. Most indexers choose to collect their rewards sooner, but we've, you know, we kind of have that high upper bound. If, you know, Ethereum gas prices, uh, you know, continue to shoot up, then indexers can choose to wait longer to kind of submit on-chain transactions to uh, collect their rewards. But the economic incentives are the same, regardless if they, uh, if they close their allocations sooner rather than later. So how do delegators fit into this? Uh, well, first of all, delegated stake is not slashed. So the, the purpose of delegated stake is to support uh, civil resistance, um, but it's not to support uh, economic security in the sense of it being something that's slashable for an indexer fault. Um, and the reason for that is mainly that we didn't want to require too much trust be between the delegator and the indexer role. We kind of want you to be able to go off 
um, you know, publicly available signals that wouldn't um, that wouldn't require you to have like a trust relationship, which could which could be centralizing, uh, uh, you know, towards a specific indexer that has enough resources to create, you know, a large brand and a large awareness. So uh, that's the main reason that delegated stake is not slashed. Um, Delegated stake in the protocol economics, what it does for the indexer is all those functions that I just showed for the, the query fee rebates and the indexer uh, rewards, that's actually that allocated stake that's in those formulas that comes from the combination of the indexer's own stake uh, and uh, the delegated stake to that indexer. So delegators actually give indexers, um, they're basically lending indexers stake that they can use for the purpose of participating effectively uh, in the network according to the incentives defined by those uh, reward functions. Uh, because delegated stake is not slashed, it's important that there is a delegation capacity. This kind of limits the amount of stake uh, proportionally in the network that is not slashable. It guarantees that indexers are still supplying some amount of their own stake that is slashable for faults that they might commit in the protocol. Uh, right now, the delegation capacity is set at a 16 to one ratio. Uh, of the indexer's own stake. So for each GRT that an indexer stakes themselves, they can productively accept 16 GRT. Uh, and productively is kind of a key word there. I'll, I'll get to that in a, in a later slide, but uh, I'll just make a note of that for now. Um, and the last thing I'll say is because delegators, uh, because indexers rather can allocate stake for up to 28 days, uh, delegators also have a 28 day unbonding period that prevents um, delegators from basically unbonding, rebonding to another indexer and then have their delegated stake be double counted towards multiple overlapping uh, allocations. Uh, so delegation parameters are what determines how much of an indexing reward, uh, how much of an indexer's query fees and indexing rewards are actually shared with a delegator as commissions. So we have these parameters called indexing, indexer reward cut, query fee cut, that's the part that the indexer keeps for themselves. Uh, and these things can be updated freely by the indexer according to a parameter cooldown. And right now there's no protocol minimum parameter cooldown. So this is something that indexers can opt into to basically signal to delegators that this is a more stable option. So they could say, you know, set attractive uh, parameters and set a long, longer cooldown. And that kind of gives delegators confidence that, uh, that this indexer is not gonna uh, rug pool, so to speak. So I'd mentioned before the delegation capacity, uh, indexers can become over-delegated. So just because there's a capacity, it doesn't mean that uh, the indexer can't continue to receive delegation. Uh, it's just that that additional delegation can't be used productively. So the indexer won't have that extra delegation available to allocate. Um, furthermore, that over-delegation will dilute the rewards earned by the existing delegators. Um, the goal with over-delegation is to provide a market signal to the indexer that their parameters are probably too attractive or that they should supply some more of their own stake. So it's kind of a market signal to the indexer that they should kind of take one of two actions. If you saw an indexer that's uh, over-delegated for the long term, that's probably an indication that they're uh, not managing their stake uh, effectively. So let's look at some of the activity that we've seen in the market so far. One thing that's kind of interesting right off the bat is just to see the, the ratio of participation that we've seen in the protocol. Um, so we've seen about, uh, currently we're at about 423 million GRT staked by indexers. Uh, and we're about 1.53 billion GRT staked by delegators. Uh, and you see that we're actually quite a bit below, on average, we're quite a bit below that 16 to 1 uh, delegation ratio. So that was actually something that was kind of surprising to us. You know, we set that ratio based on some calculations around, you know, who we expected to index versus who we expected to delegate. Um, and it turned out some of the groups of token holders that we were expecting to delegate actually ended up being active indexers. And so that kind of threw off the uh, the dynamics a little bit in in favor in this case in favor of um, of delegators because now there's all this uh, additional capacity that 
is kind of going unused. It's kind of a delegator's, it's kind of a delegator's market, so to speak. Uh, and you can kind of see that playing out in the share of rewards. So of the rewards that have been paid out in the network so far, uh, 13 million have gone to uh, indexers, 22 million have gone to delegators. So uh, that's about 63% of the rewards have actually been going to delegators rather than to uh, rather than to indexers. Um, so again, you can kind of see that market dynamic of um, uh, the delegators currently having a little bit more market power when it comes to influencing how uh, indexers set their parameters and forcing indexers to compete and set attractive parameters to attract that limited amount of uh, proportional delegation. Uh, here we're, we can see the uh, the index and reward cut. This chart definitely hides some stuff that's kind of hard to show in a succinct view, but we've been kind of seeing this bimodal distribution of indexing reward cuts. You know, we've seen a, a grouping that's kind of towards the upper range, closer to like 80, 90%. And then we've kind of seen another grouping uh, that's closer to like the 10 to 20%. Um, some caveats here is that some of these indexers that are at different parts of this range are at different are at varying degrees of over delegation. So even though this is like the reward cut that, that you're seeing in like the histogram, this is like what they've set. Um, some of the effective rewards or commissions being earned by delegators are a little bit different than would be indicated by this. Um, but it's been interesting to see that, you know, we don't have a neat bell curve here. We've been kind of seeing these sort of two camps or two um, sets of approaches and strategies to, to setting these things. And there can be, you know, a whole host of reasons for that that, uh, uh, that we could dig into. The other thing that's interesting to take a look at, and we'll, we'll get to this in, in the quality metrics, is indexing reward cut volatility. So most, so this is basically a uh, standard deviation of uh, over the last uh, month and change uh, of data. Uh, so most indexers haven't been setting their, haven't been changing their indexing reward cuts too dramatically. And that's generally, as a delegator, if you're looking at an indexer, that's generally what you would consider to be like desirable behavior because you know, you're going to have this 28 day unbonding period. You're going to lock your graph tokens up with an indexer. The last thing you want is to, you know, lock your tokens up for 28 days with an indexer with really attractive rates. And then suddenly they hike it up, you know, quite a bit. Um, that being said, looking at the histogram, you can see that there are some indexers here that have quite a bit of volatility. It's not, it's by no means a majority, but, uh, you know, we have seen from at least uh, anecdotally, we've seen, you know, in Discord, folks talking about you know some indexers, um, you know rug pooling delegators, basically setting attractive parameters and then uh, you know and then changing it on them. We've we've also seen some evidence of perhaps you know an indexer that was delegating to themselves and then changed the parameters dramatically just when it was time to withdraw rewards so that they could withdraw rewards through the delegator rather than the indexer. So there's some interesting. Um, you know, once you like drill down, there's some interesting behaviors and dynamics at play here that, you know, don't show up in, in the top view, but it's kind of a starting point for, for asking questions of, you know, why are we seeing these um, sorts of aggregate statistics on, on the indexer behavior? So what makes a good indexer? Um, first of all, you know, just a full caveat for this whole talk, none of this is like financial or investment advice, but these are just kind of for educational purposes, some things you might look at, you know, if you're assessing whether to delegate to an indexer in the graph. Um, I think most people, you know, here are familiar with DeFi. And so obviously like APY is kind of the big thing that people are looking at. It's a really good measure to look at, not just within, you know, indexers within the graph, but assessing the opportunity of delegating to an indexer versus, you know, some other uh, opportunity costs that you could be putting, you know, capital to work in, uh, whether it be in another protocol or, or even through another activity in the graph, like, you know, curating or indexing. Uh, definitely, you should be looking at the indexers delegation parameters. We've talked a lot about that. One that uh, we didn't really touch on much, but uh, I can try and give you an intuitive sense for is like what we might call staking effectiveness. So, you know, the whole um, 
the general principle behind a lot of the incentives and mechanisms for indexers in the graph is to generally reward indexers in rough proportion to the amount of stake that they're uh, you know, locking up in the network. Um, both the indexing uh, reward and the query fee rebates kind of have that dynamic that when the indexer is doing their job well, they should be receiving rewards in rough proportion to their stake. So you could actually define a metric for that if you wanted to see like, okay, you know, how much does an indexer deviate from that, right? So if an indexer had a certain amount of stake over a certain amount of time, are they receiving a share of total rewards in the network that are proportional uh, to that share of stake? And you could uh, say that some indexers will be probably receiving a greater share of rewards, in which case those are very effective indexers. And then some indexers will be receiving uh, less than that, you know, proportional share of rewards, and they would be ineffective uh, indexers. Uh, one that we covered already was delegation parameter volatility. Um, and the other one that we also covered was over delegation. So, uh, you know, if an indexer is over delegated for a, you know, a long period of time, that could be a sign that, you know, they're sort of passively participating, but not really doing things like changing the, their delegation parameters or uh, or providing their own stake as they should. On the qualitative side, you know, this is, um, I'd say a lot of this stuff is much more in the category of norm setting than like something that's gonna necessarily affect your bottom line. But like as someone who's delegating GRT and holding GRT in the graph, like you should be, you know, thinking about your role as not just like this financial role, but also like you have a chance to promote and support the indexers that you feel will be best for the long term health of the network. Uh, so obviously like the incentives are what they are and you can, you know, you can delegate to anyone. Um, but if you want to be value, you know, values aligned with the, you know, the long-term health of the network, I would, you know, recommend looking for indexers that are honest. Uh, and this one actually does impact you as well for, for reasons I'll get to in a minute, but you want indexers that are going to do what they, what they, uh, what they say they're going to do, you know, and that includes conversations that are happening off extra, like off the protocol in places like Discord, where indexers and delegators are actually interacting um, and discussing, you know, like what how they plan on setting, you know, their parameters and so on and so forth. Um, look at indexers that participate in the test net. So this isn't just actually because, uh, you know, they're supporting developers that want to build on the graph and supporting the growth of the network. Um, the indexers that participate in the test net are going to be the first ones to be using you know, the latest version of the software, they're gonna be, they'll be the ones that are actively participating in like an ongoing, you know, test bed for how to, you know, test out strategies and test out, um, uh, test out new ideas. Like they're gonna absolutely have an edge when it comes to uh, participating on mainnet. And we've already seen that, that the most successful indexers on mainnet thus far have been many of the, uh, the sort of names that, you know, we were seeing at the top of the leaderboard in the graphs test net. Uh, look for indexers that participate in the forums. Look for indexers that write docs, blog posts, build software and tools. Generally, like look for indexers that are going to be good citizens, you know, of the graph. Like we're all kind of, uh, you know, building this thing together, and like you want to, you know, we want to bring as many people into this community that are going to continue, you know, abiding by you know standards of high integrity and good work ethic and kind of, you know lift up uh, everyone who's participating in this space. So some tools that you can use to get started uh, delegating in the graph. One that our team at Edge and Node have been working on is uh, we just call the the Network Explorer. So you can check out this dashboard. You can look at kind of epochs that have uh, happened recently. You can see the indexing rewards and uh, query fees that have been collected in those epochs. You can kind of see some of the stats that we've been looking at, the break, breakdown of stake. Uh, you can check out some of the protocol parameters that I that I mentioned. So like here we see like the 3% issuance rate, uh, the share of indexing rewards and like the, the total token supply. You can also browse the list of indexers. So indexers in the graph show up by their ENS names. 
And so you can, you know, here you see a lot of the, the top indexers on the graph right now, teams like Protofire, here's Riabina, who we'll mention in a second, Sun Tzu, who we'll mention in a second. And you can see a lot of the metrics that we've talked about. You can see their delegation parameters. You can see uh, their owned and delegated stake and how much of that they've actually allocated to earn rewards on subgraphs. You can see their capacity, the query fees. Uh, and if you connect your wallet, you can go ahead and you know, delegate to, um, to these indexers. Uh, another tool you could check out is this one built by the, the Riabina team called GraphScan. A uh, little bit more information dense in some areas, uh, just kind of a different focus. They've got like a rewards calculator built in. Uh, you can also connect your wallet and take some actions from, from here. You can browse around. So highly recommend you checking this out. See a lot of the same indexers that we were just looking at. And the last one I'll show for right now is um, this one by uh, one of our indexers, Sun Tzu, and it's just another one with this, a little bit more of an emphasis on rewards uh, rewards calculations. So, you know, one thing, uh, one number of things that we've learned um, since we launched the network is just like, what are the KPIs and what are the metrics that, uh, you know, indexers and delegators care about most to kind of go about you know, managing their daily operations in the network. And it's been amazing to see like these things have just kind of sprung up to, to fill that need, you know? So if there was a metric or KPI or calculation that was missing from like the Explorer that the Edge Node team had built, um, you know, we've seen just a Cambrian explosion of, uh, of community projects. Uh, and then the last plug that I'll give just while we're looking at uh, tools for interacting with the network is just the subgraph itself. So look, the subgraph that's powering a lot of these tools uh, is running on the graph. It is a, it is a subgraph. Uh, and so a lot of the metrics, even some of the ones that we don't expose in the Edge and Node uh, Network Explorer, you can still find a lot of that data in the subgraph because you know teams in the community and ecosystem are collaborating to define what uh, what metrics are important to people. So you can browse the schema of the network, you can see a lot of like the top level network stats. Um, this is actually like where I pulled the data to, to build a lot of the charts that I showed in the deck. Uh, you can browse like allocations, you can browse indexers. So a lot of the same, a lot of the same um, uh, data that you see in, in the, uh, you know, the UIs, but in like a little bit more of a low level kind of comprehensive, uh, you know, manner. If you, you know, if you're comfortable writing GraphQL, um, I enjoy pulling these things into tools like Observable HQ, kind of like a hosted Jupyter notebook for JavaScript. So you can kind of just really go wild with exploring the data that's uh, available in the network and available in the graph. And you're using the graph while doing it, which is amazing. Um, so some final thoughts, it's, you know, we're only a month in and we've already learned a ton, you know, from uh, seeing the way that indexers and, and delegators are interacting, you know, on the graph. Um, the Discord has been uh, absolutely insane. It's just like nonstop activity, uh, you know, so I highly recommend if you want to connect with people that are participating, uh, you know, go there. We have a specific channel set up that's actually just for indexers and delegators to uh, to communicate. And so we've been seeing stuff like there, we've been seeing stuff there like holiday specials, right? Like, and these are things that like, you know, we didn't even see in our test net, right? Like they're just sort of emergent behaviors that um, you really only see them show up when, when it's a live network. And, and, and it's the kind of stuff that you really have to like drill past the data to kind of see like at the individual level, what are, mo what's motivating people. So we've been talking to a lot of indexers, talking to delegators, seeing the chats, seeing those interactions. And it's been really amazing to um, kind of see these things play out and see like the micro interactions that form, you know, the kind of, uh, or that respond to like the larger scale incentives that we've, you know, designed into the graph. Um, the next place I'll give a plug for is the graph forum, which we just launched like a week or two, but it's already got a ton of activity. Uh, one thread that I'll just plug right now, since we're talking about delegation is I, I started a, a roll up thread for just a lot of feedback that we've been getting on delegation and, it's already got a ton of people who have been delegating over the last month, piping in with their experiences. So 
if after this talk you feel so motivated to go try delegating in the graph, which would be fantastic, uh, you know, please check out the discourse. Like, let us know what that experience has been like for you, whether it's the protocol level or the or the UI. Um, and uh, yeah, and add add your voice to the conversation because like these, you know, these conversations are the things that are going to drive the next, you know, set of changes and improvements, you know, that the community kind of works on, uh, you know, to improve the network. Uh, and then the last one, apologies for the notion link here, but uh, someone, uh, one of our, I think our community managers threw this together recently, um, but just a resource for a lot more of the, the tools than, than I had a chance to show in the, the, um, the talk today, but, you know, already in the last month, we've been seeing a bunch of you know, third-party dashboards, rewards calculators, uh, unofficial guides. Um, uh, and it's, yeah, it's been really fantastic to see, you know, obviously our team's been super busy uh, and, you know, we can only be in so many places at once. So seeing just the way that people are stepping up and like, if they see a problem that needs to be solved, they're just kind of building the tool, right? Like it's, it's kind of, uh, it's kind of, you know, what crypto is all about. It's like permissionless innovation, right? Um, so that's been really fantastic. And so please go check those tools out. And, you know, if you see something that could be improved, help help those developers out. And uh, I guess we can stop there. I'll, I'll pause for uh, some questions. Do we have someone moderating the uh, the chat? All I can see is my my deck. Well, we, we uh, do. Jonathan, do we have anything in the chat for questions? I'm gonna take a look here real quick. Uh, just a lot of comments. I don't see any real clear questions. Yeah, you're getting a lot of praise over here. Yep. I love this. Keep it going. <laughs> cool. Thank you. Yeah. Well, team's team's been working super hard. So, uh, and one th one thing I'll just say, just I guess while we're on the thank you screen, is like it's been um, it's been a, I'm. So obviously it's been a lot of hard work for the, you know, the initial team that built this stuff, but it's also just been absolutely incredible to see the amount of like community work that's been happening, you know, obviously during the test net, but just in like the last month and a half, uh, you know, just on a scale that like we couldn't have imagined. Um, so thank you to everyone who's watching this, that's been a part of that, that's been in the discord, that's been helping people out, that's been writing docs, blog posts. Uh, it's been really great to see. No, you guys are a great success story. I think it's I think it's excellent. So congratulations on all that. We look forward to seeing your team around the Ether space this week, and uh, we appreciate it. I'm gonna. I don't know if, if you got one of these yet, but like I'm I'm like getting ready to go play some Minecraft. So <laughs> well, thanks a bunch. I don't think we have any questions. So um, Brandon, thank you very much for that, and. Um, yeah, we'll see you. Uh, we'll see you around. Cool. Thanks a lot, everyone. Enjoy your conference. You got it.